Hi, Sports DePaul here. We're looking at Solid Cam, Cam software, computer aided manufacturing that makes G codes to run your milling machine or EDM or whatever you have you. Um, today we're going to get a little bit into 3D, not super heavy 3D. Uh, I was a little distraught. You know, I was thinking it's a mid range package being around five grand. Problem is HSS, high speed surfacing. Well, that's another couple grand more, and high speed roughing that's a couple grand more and you need to machine the roughing so hsm high speed machining is a couple grand more and well you'd want 3d i machining 2d i machining is in the base package 3d i machining well that's a couple grand so you can easily get over 10 grand and i'm not sure you know if i want to do radial stuff well, you know how much more over five grand do i want to spend and it's a you get a deal everybody gets a deal so that's between you and your salesman. I'll let you worry about that. But this isn't necessarily uh, basic stuff, base package stuff. Although high speed surfacing, which we're going to use here, uh, there are two flavors of that constant Z and level. I think if I can, if the salesman got it right, where that is included in the base package. And so you'll see what we can do there. So let's go up to SolidWorks. Here we are. This is a oil reservoir for this Sportster, Harley Sportster I'm redesigning. The generator, this old one, Iron Sportster. So the generator sits here, the primary cover sits here, and then I'm moving the oil from a separate oil bag inside the engine. And this is one of the places where the oil is gonna sit on the left side of the engine. It's got, you know, half or a quarter inch radius is here, all along the inside. It's got big half inch radius here, flat here. I mean, I wanted it to be somewhat machinable. So we've turned on the add in for solid cam. Let me make a quick check here. Here's the, the button. Here's, here's the part tree, right, to make this thing. So we go here to cam part. You got to understand this is where you start. There's nothing to help you. It's a little intimidating. And you say you want a milling part. Uh, da, 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 is not saved. Do you want to save it? Well, okay. I think I, I changed some, suppressed some views or something. So now it's create a cam part. Solid cam lets you make an external part. PRZ, it's a zip file. You can rename it to ZIP and see what's inside it. It takes this part, copies it into this zip folder, then adds their stuff, the stock box, any tool paths, and that way you're not cluttering your original solid part file. My trick is, well, you could just put it in an assembly. You can make an assembly with only one part in it. And then the assembly file has all the solid cam tool paths and stuff, and the file size grows. But we're going to do internal. So the solid part file will get bigger as we save these tool paths into it. Uh, cam part name, I, I don't like this. I'm learning all the things that cause problems later on. I want to make this short because it'll solve a problem that I'm learning. Say, OK, we want to do that. So this is the same kind of thing. It's a 3D milling machine operation. They want you to fill these three boxes in and get a check, check, and a check, green check boxes. That's your goal here. So you get coordinate system. Now, I, now I'm not a machinist, so I might be doing this all wrong. So my theory is I want to machine, I want to hog all this out. So if the thing pretzels up from internal stresses, rolling stresses in the plate, that when I do machine the flat gasket area, it'll be dead flat. So right now I'm thinking start like this, select face. It'll be on this face. We're going to have to do all this over anyway. Don't worry about it. Pick origin. I forget where I did this. I think I put it in the vice. I, you know, this is like the fourth time I've been playing with this. I think I put it here. It just happened to be right for my Avid Benchtop Pro router-based milling machine. It's supposed to be able to do aluminum. Well, it does. I've done it. Everybody's doing it. But it's big enough for like big parts. This one will be a piece of cake. X is towards the right, positive X. Y is towards the back. So it, we just lucked out. Otherwise, you got to go down here and start flipping stuff till it points the way your machine points. So that's your coordinate system. You say yes. This all this stuff, you know, clearances and that, it's going to complain when we go make tool paths. And you can fix it here, but you're lying to it about where the top of the part, where the bottom. The help guide told me, it's like, well, you know, five axis, that's where it might be important. I'm not going to worry about it. Ignore this. Thanks. 
position. You say, oh, here's where you change it. And so let's, let's say inside, because there's an inside, rather than top and bottom, inside setup. And don't say add, that'll confuse you. Say no, I just wanted to rename it. So now it's inside setup and they've checked the target because you, when you pointed at that face, it said that's the target. I made a mistake in an assembly file where somehow that target also included a clamp and it took hours to figure that out. So you can go look at it. Yeah, you know, if it was an assembly and there's other stuff in here, make sure it's not confused. So now you do the stock. They kind of understand you want to put a stock size in, right? Boy, what's oh this is the 50 inch box they default to a 50 inch box and they do default to a 50 inch box i think you just yeah you, you touch the part it does a bounding box for you but see you don't order stock like this you order let's make it let's make it 8.5 no not 85 sorry about that i'm rushing because it's going to be a lot this show might be an hour long I already did one and it crashed and corrupted the colors and let's make this 8.5 go there and so it's got a little meat on the top because you want to deck this gasket surface off make it dead flat a little meat on the bottom because i want pretty swirls on the, on the outside of this part uh what else is going on well the the, the stock is done we'll go here oh no it's not done i made a mistake you want a, you want a bounding box you're going to need this later trust me add box to cad mode do that and then when we get out there's a box here with little asterisks where you can attach the origin because you're going to want to move this origin here and there's no simple way can you go over here now no not really so say fine and it thinks and now it's almost ready to do some honest work updated stock see there's a stock it fills that box we made but see i don't want the part zero to be here i want it to be in the corner of the stock and apparently this is the only way to do it you go see what do we want to do we want to move part zero so we go to coordinate sys you got to understand you go edit now you gotta suffer and say oh edit coord sys again now we're back where we were uh, oh you have to pick a face just like you're starting so you select that face again. So now it knows what plane the coordinate system, then origin. And now you're allowed to pick this origin. And we lucked out again. X is to the right. Y is to the back, just like my particular milling machine. And you say, OK, so now the, now part zero is where you can find the edges and, and, and the corner to, to put in your milling machine. Same gibberish here. Don't worry about it. And it thinks. And, and OK, once again, on the way out, you don't say add or edit. You just go here and say, yes, I accept that. And here's the problem. Bam. Stock got confused because you move the coordinate system. The stock kind of went with it relative to where the zero zero was before. Not a crisis. Watch this. Double click on stock. Thinks. Close it. Now when you update it, it's in the right spot. OK, so once again, my theory is if it's plate, when you hog all this out and also deck in the bottom, the, you know, the outside of this, the, the, even a half inch and a half plate can tweak a little bit. Now, there is here's Midwest Metals. Let's see. Midwest Steel and Aluminum. Midwest Steel Supply Com. I like this outfit. That's 6061 aluminum plate, right? Half inch. Eight, you can order it up. I looked. It was $47. This tool and jig plate, it's cast and it's mushy and it doesn't have the rolled in stresses. So this doesn't have the strength properties of 6061, but it also won't potato chip up when you hog out a big chunk of it. So maybe I'll let the pro machinist comment whether that's a smart thing to do or not. Meanwhile, let's do the hog out. Uh, how are we set up? No, you got to go up one to operations, add milling operation. So the first thing I want to do is hog it out. And we're going to let's do some 3D right away. This is an extra cost package, HSR. They never spell anything out because it's more confusing. 3D high speed roughing there. What's interesting, you know, target. In other words, it's not like you select faces or anything. 
if we go here where it's like a new target, you can go there. It gives you this. All it lets you, you can't pick a surface. Bam, the whole model lights up. And now instead of saying target, it says model. But it's got the same kind of thing. Tool, we got to give it a tool. Let me think. Select. Uh, you got to know. No, not copy. You got to go import tools. Instead of cinder drills, you got to know solid cam master tools for aluminum. I think, let me think, we're going to raster the bottom. Now, this is going to do the bottom floor. So I want a square end mill, but a fairly big one. So end mill, end mill, end mill, 5 16 3 8 carbide. Uh, it's got to be pretty long, inch and a half at least. So I think that's the right one. Once again, don't hit the green arrow. Don't hit that arrow either because it'll give it the same tool number to next free tool number. It's done it. It won't let you see it if this dialog was off. So there it is. Here's the tool. Fantastic. You go here, it lights up yellow. You go here, it lights that up yellow. You go pick this, it highlights that. So you can modify the tool here. And this tool belongs to this part and it won't go back and corrupt your library or any of that business. So constraint boundaries will come back. I kind of want to recreate all my mistakes. Step down. That's pretty, pretty fine step down. Let's just do it. OK, you got to understand that everything's unlabeled. Save and calculate. Save and calculate with related operations. Still don't know what the difference between the two is. We'll figure it out. It's a lot of work, right? It's got to do a lot of thinking. I'm going to pull this. No, I can't move the boxes. So that's that thing about a cast metal, not potato chipping up. I might be doing this all wrong. Like I say, look in the comments. Maybe I should be doing the outside first, including the whole perimeter, and then flip it over, hog the inside so any pretzeling is going to happen, but on the outside it won't be that serious. Although if it moves those bolt holes, well, that's a big deal. So maybe then you do the bolt holes from the back. But the counterbores are, you know, machining's beautiful. It's sophisticated and hard to do, generating tool. So look what it does. It's like, oh, there's stock, right? I'm smart. I'm a computer programmer. There's stock. I'll remove the stock. And I, I haven't found where you see the times. There's got to be a way in, in this program to see how much time this operation takes. But it obviously is going to take too much. So you say constraint boundaries. That's because the boundary was just, well, I'll do all the stock. You say create manual, a user defined boundary. This would let you, if you had previous ones picked, you know, and this is all the stuff you end up clicking as you try to learn this. This is to edit an existing boundary, but it's not hard to do. I don't want it to climb up on, on this gasket surface, right? I, I don't want it to be that smart because I did that once. So for the name, it's pocket boundary and the chain list let's start right here and because solid cam so powerful it just connects all that yes collect connect that yes accept that yes recalculate your tool paths Phoenix I went through so now oh this happened before right double click did you ever know that these boxes do that I didn't let's drag them off so it's spiraling down it's acting good you can hit this simulate button down here. You probably can't see. I was under my headshot, but trust me. And you can simulate. This is the, what do you call it? The quick verify or the solid verify simulation. And you can watch it doing its thing. I'm going to stop it to show you right up at the beginning of this show. The cool simulator. Let's get get go down here. Well, you can't see that, can you? Go down here, exit and save. Oh, I made a mistake again. This is oh, and it opens up way over here. Good gosh. Um, inside pocket, and maybe you know if you want to remind yourself, this is high speed roughing inside pocket. Close out of it, and now it's renamed. Oh, here's the other thing. The stock box, if you don't need to look at it anymore, it does it does clutter your tree, your part tree, right here in SolidWorks. But you can suppress it 
and then you don't got to look at that box until you need it the next time when we're going to go do the bottom setup or the outside, let's call it, setup. Keeps pushing over. Oh, this is, see, I made this a short thing. Let's do this. Delete. It opens up this dialog box, and all I've been doing is saying, and then that shortens up, and maybe we won't have this thing constantly pushing off to the right on us. It's pretty frustrating. Now, updated stock is supposed to be context sensitive. It should show, but for me, it doesn't. It never has. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The, the help guy said, oh, no, that's why we call it updated stock instead of this stock. Let's just not look at any of that stock. Inside pocket, done. Now what? Um, I guess we can finish. Oh, come on, Paul. Let's show you the good simulator. This thing is just awesome. And I think comparison why that's black. And then we'll speed this way up and we'll start it. Um, so yeah, the, the pricing situation is kind of scary to me. I don't, I don't want to spend $10,000. But the power of this program is inarguable. The, the problem with every dialog box seems different. You know, did I talk about that? How chamfering 2D, it's, it's a drop down. It says rest cha slash chamfer to invoke the tab it creates. In 3D contouring, well, it's a little checkbox over on the right side. It's like no consistency. Unlike Bobcad, which is way cheaper. They're giving me a price that's almost embarrassing. Uh, you can see they've made an effort for a consistent look and feel of all the dialog boxes so you kind of know where you're at. Whereas learning this program for me has been a bit of a pain. It's still doing its thing. We should be able to see how it followed those curves on the way down. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so there we are. Let's turn this on. It's got to think. Okay, it looks like it's leaving material on the floor and material on the wall. And this is what I've been going through with this program. All of them. It's like I've never seen. Double click. Come here. Uh, constraint boundaries? No. You would think it would be passes. Wall offset? Zero. Floor offset? Zero. Tolerance? Step down? Let's make the step down a little. Let's make it a... Uh, well, let's make it a round number. Let's make it 50 thousandths. Calculate. Let's make okay. it a little bit quicker. Let's get out of here. Let's just count on that being correct, because I'm going to speed up through the simulations, because I don't want you sitting here just twiddling your thumbs. But trust me, there's staircases here, right? Because it's a square end, square flat end mill, it, it can't super follow that every step down it's going to have that, those 50,000 step downs it's going to have that uh i wonder if we can sh if it's any quicker to show it here okay i sped that up because you don't need to wait like i did but you can see the staircases here right can't have any of that so tool pass no tool pass go add milling operation HSS, high speed surfacing. Now, what you, oh, let me tell you, what, what you can do, these are quarter inch radiuses. That's the way I designed it. If you had a half inch ball nose end mill and a mill powerful enough, you can just go down there. I, I did it, I, I simulated that, and it works perfect. Half inch end mill, great. You got to make sure the lead in and lead out's okay, it doesn't carve anything. But I've got this high speed router, 24,000 RPM spindle. So I can't put a half inch tool, I don't think. So my thinking is, add milling operation, high speed surfacing, get this dialog box. Instead of linear, I want to do constant. I think these are the two free ones that you should get with the base, you know, 5,000-ish package, linear and constant Z. I've been successful with constant Z. The geometry, now this acts kind of the way I'd like it. This is where you love this program, right? You just pick the surfaces. You're going to want to HSS. Here, 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 
and I guess it pre-colors it and then when it's contiguous it turns a dark purple uh, everybody probably spent seven days arguing about that oh, I guess that selected them all uh, the name is inner fillet and say okay so that's their thing see and you can see if you have others tool select I think we got to do our trick again and now we want a ball mill and I think I mean, you can use an eighth inch but I think ball knows there it is so let's use this quarter inch do our trick next free tool number oh you got to get a oh god and then I believe I had issue I wanted to make the tool longer and the flutes longer make the tool longer uh, cutting length I wanted to be an inch and it tells you here cutting length cannot be greater than shoulder length make that an inch too and when it's not warning you down here you're okie dokie go here so there's our tool automatic levels see every every box is different close tolerance uh, now let's go a really small step over let's go a ten thousand ten thousandths not a tenth now that's ridiculous we don't need it Let, let's go this way. this is why you love the program right I want a thousandth scallop in other words error within a thousandth that means you can do 30,000 steps 31,000 steps are we ready it's hard to believe some of this stuff is so wonderful go here it's thinking there they are although yeah I think I think it's smart enough it just did its thing so let's close this oh no I made him always constantly I wish you know visual mill you just hold hold click here and you rename it here you gotta say inner fill it and save so we got that named and it keeps pushing the box over because this is 1972 you know, let's, <sighs> let's do our fantasy this is gonna now it should deal with this rate and okay so now you can see the staircases and now you can go here and here comes our ball mill zip 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 I think it's done and now we can do our compare function look at that and just like when I did uh, the the T slot and undercut one it didn't go all the way down right here the tip of the tool is still even a little bit of meat right why that is I have no idea it doesn't look like a a big error but that could be you know setting the tool con tool tip contact point that's definitely you know call for help but it's close right I mean I could put this part into service it's not the print but I could put it to service and that's cool so next we've got that that let's do the gasket surface for that we might speed ahead for this add milling operation it's a profile the geometry new geometry let's call this gasket gasket surface chain list let's see you want to do climb milling also it helps to come in I think here was a smart way to do this you see it goes all the way around gets the whole perimeter you say yes um, say that's it tool select I think we'll use that end mill it's smart enough maybe maybe it's smart enough to know that's what we wanted to do levels this is what you love profile and if it didn't have it right when you do that it'll be right now uh, upper level that's where if you leave that stock box you could go select the stock box is the upper level I'm not sure what's going on there technology 
see every box is different. Clear offset, offset, I think I ended up 0.4, and the step over is 0.125. You can tell I've been practicing. And I think that's all I had to do. It's on the left. I, you know, that's the whole master cam thing is where you pick that line puts a little arrow in the geometry. And it's not till it climb, till it cut, till it which side. It's point it and then say left or right here in this dialog box or dead center, which is if I was trying to clean up that excess material, I'd take a ball mill and do a profile right on that and say do it dead center down low and it would probably clean it up. Next, what are we doing? I think we can the tool pass. Let's see what happens. Wrong side. But left is climb milling, right? Correct? Okay. So let's go. I'm getting good at this. Geometry. Oh, I guess you can do geometry here, but I'm always more comfortable here. Edit the geometry. This chain and say reverse. F5. It must be common enough of a problem. So reverse the chain. I'm glad you saw this because it was as a newbie, it's something I messed with. Here, it's doing its thing. Now they're on the right side, and it, it gets all the meat. You know, th that's why I had to do step overs. And I just don't know why step down and step over are in 40 point let type, you know, to make it easy, because it's something I'm always messing with. Okay, we'll get out of here. We don't have to look at this. Now, I think you go up to operations. You do. Machine setup. Add it end of, you probably can't see it, but it's saying add it end of operation tree. Setup one, this is outer setup. And then this, you get to make a new, I think this is where you make a new one. Show new. So now you're back to doing your coordinate system stuff, right? And so you're going to add one. See, <laughs> nothing's ever quite the same. Uh, you select a face. Now, let's see, I think I want to do it like this. This face. And, oh, the origin. See, we're going to, uh, I got to bomb out of this. Sorry, folks. Unless it lets me go over here. It won't. Oh, my God. I think I'm obviously out of my comfort zone. Sorry, sorry, say okay, it'll make, it made the new setup, it just hasn't made the coordinate system. <laughs> the most important thing. Go over here, once again, we, we want to show this, where is it, or unsuppress it, because we're going to need that. Outer setup, double click. Um, here, oh, this is where you add fixtures, by the way. Another fun little fact. Here, new. I think you go add, select face, good. Oh, and it throws everything. Oh, geez. I think my theory was where this is the old zero. So leave, leave it on the left. Leave this flat thing on the left. Flip it around like that. So we got the face selected. Pick origin. Now all you got to do is pick this one. It happens to be in the right thing. Good. Oh, I didn't give it a good name yet. And this is where you say outside setup instead of top and bottom because the way it sits in a motorcycle, it's left and right. Okay. And outside setup belongs to this outside setup. You say, okay, nothing appears like here, which gets you kind of worried. But when you make your first tool path and what did I do? I think, well, I wanted the face, but why face the whole thing? Right. My thinking was, let's just oh gosh, it's so let's do a pocket. The geometry, pick the geometry, call it this is the perimeter geometry parameter. If I could spell, it would help. Why is there an extra R? And then select. Yeah, we want to face. Since this is a pocket, I think it all works out. Start here. 
No, we start here because we want to be on the left, right? There it goes. Yes, accept it. Yes, we're done. Uh, tool, select, we'll use that end mill, same 3 8 end mill. Um, levels, pocket, it's showing a pocket depth of a half an inch. Let's see what happens when we actually tell it how deep we want it. <laughs> Zero. Okay, glad we did that. Let's calculate. There they are. Right side, I think it's climb milling. Life is good. So we've done that. Uh, this is face. Ah, see, I'm hurrying, and all that does is make me make more mistakes. Face outer. Enter doesn't do anything. You're going to do that. Okay, face outer. That's comforting. So then, add milling. Oh, see, I noticed our Mac 2 appeared, and it looks like the other one. I wish Visual Mill would teach everybody how to do user interfaces. This is going to be HSS again. And this is, I'm going to show you something beautiful. This is why you love this program. And this is why you want a CAM program that runs inside SOLIDWORKS. I'll show you right now. It's got the right we're doing there. We're going to make a new drive surface. This is fillet outer. Select faces, right? It's high speed HSS. So it's smart enough to know, oh, you're going to be selecting faces. I don't think there's a direction. Do this, this, select these fillets. Be sure to get this little guy here and this little guy right there. Get this guy, that one, and that one. Faces are selected. Great. Uh, blah -dee -dee -da. Tool, I think we can use that same ball mill. Say yes. Levels, automatic, toolpath parameters. Let's make it just as accurate as the other one. Notice the math all is identical for a curved surface. I think we might be ready. Let's pull it off to the side, say, do our thing. There they are. Now, this is why you love programs that run in SOLIDWORKS. There's a big Bobcad 3D video on YouTube about when you got holes in your surface, how to pave them over, and then they become flat, and then it's still warped. Okay, watch this. First, let's, because this is ridiculous, clearance is not automatic. Clearance is a plane, and the plane is three tenths of an inch. So these ridiculous retracts are gone. <laughs> My machine isn't big enough, it doesn't have enough Z. Okay, so we fixed that. Now, note, I'm leaving the solid cam HSS dialog box up. Okay. Check this out. Go into the SOLIDWORKS tree. Drag the bar up above bolt counter bolts. So all those holes disappear now. Right? They're gone. They've been paved over because the bar is up here. Go here. Well, you don't even have to go there. Watch. N nothing. Just recalculate. So says, hey, you already calculated it once. Do it again. Trust me. Bam. Perfect. And go. You, you didn't even have to come over here. You could have stayed here and then go back down. It doesn't complain. It doesn't automatically update stuff. It's just done. So let's, uh, I want this so you can see, I usually go out this way. Oh, and we can, while we were over the tree, we could have gotten rid of, could have suppressed that stock box. So we don't have to look at that. And you know me, I love that fancy simulator. Let's see if we can uh, do its thing. I think I mentioned it crashed while I was practicing to do this. One of the shows. We got to be up here now. Here's our ball mill. Here's all this extra material because I, and so I changed these colors all went to like tiny shades of gray or purple. So it's un. Okay. So there's where it faced off. And now we're going to try to put that radius in. So let's say here, do your thing. It's quick, right? I got it sped up pretty good. Come on, slow down a little. This don't the way I crashed it, it was still running and I closed it. So always stop it and then close it. It's nice that it breaks out, you know, if you want to enter or exit, you know, the I, I haven't really worried about that. 
where it comes in or comes out. But you can see it's pretty good. And we asked for that thousandth of an inch. Let's do our compare. Pretty much green, right? Sweet. So close out of this. While we're here, speaking of crashing, how about a save? Yeah, that would be good. So, oh, and we didn't name it right. This is, it, it picked up, fill it out, or let's do it that way. Don't need those tool paths. Now it's, you know, you can, you could end the video now. Uh, jump ahead, add milling operation, pocket. This shows some of the, the selection brains of this. Geometry. And unlike Mastercam, it seems the order you pick stuff actually matters here. So I think you go here, say OK to accept, yes. Here, OK to accept. Or no, you go here, see, because it's not a completely closed, I guess. Okay, okay, so now it's closed. It'll also say, hey, you just want to connect it with a straight line. So we'll go, oh, I'm sorry. This is so much fun. Goes around. Oops, not doing it all. There we go. No, I already picked. Okay. I think I, I yeah, I, uh, I pooched that one. All right, let's try again. Needless to say, it worked fine in the, here? Ah, and then what I did, see, now it's happy. Isn't that amazing? I think, see, this is saying it wants to launch off this way. This is the, change direction there and then say continue over here boom made it closed so the help guy was worth talking to for an hour uh, here but the other say, thing go to the next one now it's closed what it was saying is hey should i add a solid solid line needless to say that doesn't work today change the direction so it goes the right direction close it yes it's closed this one should be a no-brainer. Yes, that's OK. And this one probably will be a no-brainer. Yes, that's OK. And obviously, i got to redesign this to make all the breakouts consistent and whatnot. And we'll want to chamfer these and a lot of other stuff. But I think that's it. Go here, say Tool, Select, we got a quarter inch ball nose, but we don't have, since those are quarter inch holes, the counter bores are suitably bigger. So I figure use a quarter inch carbide end mill. That one, it only has to be a half inch long, nice and stiff. Let's do that. And remember to go here, next free tool number. Oh, it's done. I keep forgetting. The way in and out of dialog boxes is always different, too. There's no consistency there. I think levels, we might want to teach it. Pocket depth is right there. Say OK. And then let it do its thing. I, for some reason, at radius length, will set to maximum. I don't know what that means. But it's spiraling down, kind of like you'd want it. Oh, and that could be a mistake. Upper level. Here, because that might be a feed, right? You want the upper level of the pocket. Now, let's see if it changes a little. No. Okay, so it was smart enough to know what's going on. We can close that. So that's that. Uh, and then add milling operation, pocket, geometry, select this one. We'll go in this direction. Oh, let's just hit enter. I learned that trick. Here, enter. Here, enter. Because okay, it crashed. Uh, uh, <laughs> I reboot when I, you know, I start from the beginning. I don't know about you folks. So now I've selected all the drill holes. Save you the time of watching me suffer. Go here, 
tool. We want a new tool because they're quarter inch holes. We can't use a quarter inch end mill. Uh, import from mystery land. You see it defaulted now back to center drills, solid cam master tools. Eighth inch carbide as long as it comes. One inch, it's probably not long enough, but that's life. It's interesting, it doesn't seem to complain about the uh, flutes being next to the and levels. Upper level is here. Say OK. The, the lower level, aka pocket depth, well, you want it to go here, but 0.8, let's, let's make 20 thousands more 0.802 or no that's not 20 thousands 0.82 so it goes down a little bit and cleans that edge up just like we've done before uh, let's look at them say yeah we know and there they are little eighth inch end mill going down inside you can see it it's circling and plunging and circling and plunging and life is good all that, you know, you can clean up. This is 2D stuff. I'm not too worried about this. Let's close out of here. That, okay, so now we're almost done. It is going to be an hour show, isn't it? Even with the crash taken out of here. So now, just cut the part out, right? We're, we're ready to go. So if I remember right, the four times, I'm changing up a little the way I did it. Profile. I wonder if we can use that old perimeter profile. Show us, where is that? That's it. That's what we want to cut out. We used it as a drive for, what, to fill it in or something? I can't even remember. So that's kind of nice, saved a little work. Tool, oh, we got a quarter inch. This is a quarter, well, this is a ball nose, right? Now, this is a flat end mill. The 3 8 is probably bigger. Let's use the 3 8 It's It's going to be cutting cu cutting more material, but it's an awful deep cut, right? Quarter inch, I'd be worried. It gets a lot stronger to go from quarter to 3 8 that extra eighth of an inch. Levels. Now watch this. Upper level is, of course, right there. Not a big deal. Profile depth. Now this is another trick I'm going to show you here. So it's saying, okay, we're going to go down 1.3. That would cut the part loose, but you're not supposed to do that, right? If you cut the part completely loose, it's going to rattle just as it opens up and then twang and break the tool and cause all kinds of... Now, my buddy Dave, who designed that one part we used in all of our evaluation episodes in first, second, third impressions, he swears you can go, instead of going down 1.3, go 1, 2, 9, 5. Leave 5 thousandths down there. And so you're not really cutting the part free, but you're leaving a 5,000th, almost like tinfoil around there that will hold it. And he swears you can then just take it and break it apart and take a, a deburring tool, run around the outside, ready to go, ship it. So let's see if this, oh no, we got to do a step down. Is that a level thing? You think levels. Well, I want to go step down levels. No, no, nothing's more sensible. It's not an offset. Equal step down. Step down, huh? Well, that's not a bad number, is it? Let's 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 see what it looks like. Did it go on the wrong side? It did, because we don't know what we're doing. So I guess oh, because we flipped it upside down. Isn't that amazing how that works? So let's go back to geometry, go pick a new one, and this time we'll worry about see if we pick here and we're on the left side and it's rotating counter you know clockwise the little arrow is in, in the little arrow is in that direction because you don't want to change it to conventional milling let's do this now we should see our there they are it's kind of a master cam thing this left right direction of the geometry a lot of programs don't bother with that 
I guess we're there, right? We can hide that toolpath. Let's do a file in case we crash again. File, save all. And now if we do simulate, sorry this has taken so long, but so the big things I want to warn you, not all this, you know, the base package, the, the mid-range 5000 is two and a half D. You get two high-speed surfacing and none of the high-speed roughing, high-speed machining, and certainly you don't get 3D eye machining. But okay, so look here, see, that's pretty cool, right? Take, take the compare function off. Let it do its thing. It's really going fast. Zip, 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 zip. Turn compare back on. We may have left some wall side on there. No. See, it's green. Oh, here's a good place to look, right? Green all the way there. But see, it's still connected by a little. Now, this, it should be 5,000, so I may be doing something wrong. You know, you would think this would be this gray color, somewhere between 4,000 and 5. But I have learned it, there is two different, you know, in the th it's closer here because this is the intersection between that gasket surface we did on the inside of the part versus this is the outside of the part running this 3 8 We also want to change the, the start and stop. I, I picked this one. I should have picked here or where's another good place to pick? Pick here as the start. And I haven't found a way to just, no, I want to start and stop this. I want the entry point to be here. Some CAM programs do that. Uh, that's life. I found it was just easier. Go remake the geometry and do it from here where it's where the entry and exit is off the stock, right? That works out great. Then you can just lengthen it and you, and it won't hog this out. All right. So there you have it. High speed machining, high speed. I'm sorry. We didn't do high speed machine. We did high speed roughing. We did surfacing with the basic Z level that would be included in the base package, the 5,000 ish, a little more, a little less, depends on the mood of your salesman. And you can see that high speed roughing, if you know you had sloped walls in that, boy, you'd really want to pay extra to get that. For me, it puts it out of my price range. So we're going to be looking at Bobcad and other ones that for much less money will sell a full 3D package. But that'll be later. Next time, maybe eye machining, maybe 3D eye machining, if we can do that real quick. I'll catch you then. Good luck with your camp projects. Bye now.